Now, if you've come this far in the video and are wondering, what's the point of this? Can't I just duplicate it up and up and up and up? And one, yes, absolutely, you can duplicate this file. You can simply highlight that all, go Command Z, and duplicate it up and up and up and up and introduce more and more windows and do a whole bunch of things to make this exactly what you want. But the purposes of this video is very simple. If anything changes, and I can guarantee you from the first day you draw this to the last day it goes out on site, something is gonna change every 10 minutes. You don't want to have to go into this project and change the same thing 50 times. If you have repetition of floor plans, you wanna create small modules or small parts that can be quickly and easily updated. Update it once, save yourself so much time, so many headaches. If you're somebody that is in the architecture industry or looking to become an architect, you're probably one day dreaming of designing your very own skyscraper. Well, today I wanna to make it so clear, so easy, that anybody who knows even the basic understanding of Archicad can start to create their own skyscraper. Okay, so like always, we're gonna be starting with the Archicad Select template. It is the Australian 25 version for me. Feel free to use whatever template you have available to you guys. The template selection isn't too critical for what we're showcasing today. Basically, what we're gonna be starting with is by creating the repetitive nature of the skyscraper itself. As you may or may not be aware of, most skyscrapers and any other building really in general has a fundamental planning policy that basically dictates the shape, the structure, the height, and everything in between. So with any skyscraper, it's gonna be extremely different. That's why none of them look exactly the same besides creative flair, of course. So we aren't really gonna be focusing on that base, the base that basically dictates the ground, the social interaction, and the human element. We're just gonna be focusing on the repetitive nature of repetition of floor plans. So there's a couple of things we wanna keep in mind when we start on the 25 select template. One, we wanna make sure that all our story settings are identical throughout the project. So that means any time that we do anything and start creating new files, new master layers, and new hot links. We don't wanna have any of our levels different. So let's start by pressing Control and seven to open up our story settings. What you'll see is we have our ground first and our roof, which is a very, very basic setup. I always just simply untick all of those on the side because I don't care about them in elevation, but you can leave them ticked if you want. That's just personal preference. Now, let's say we're starting with a very big skyscraper. We're gonna insert something below and we're gonna call it our footings. Footings on a skyscraper are huge, but the footings layer isn't actually that important. So we can make it whatever height we want. We can make it 100 mil for a standard concrete slab. We can make it three meters for mass concrete footings for those columns that are gonna be supporting this structure. Or we can leave it as absolutely anything. It's really not critical as long as it is identical throughout every single file. Moving up again, it's all about that repetition. It doesn't matter what these numbers are. They're gonna be unique to your situation, your construction material and methods. So what I put in here isn't exactly critical, but feel free to follow along step by step. So on our ground floor, let's say we want three meter ceilings and then we want our ground ceiling space. With skyscrapers, obviously it's important that we have a ceiling. First of all, we'll probably have a suspended concrete slab that might be about 250 millimeters thick, if not more, plus another 300, 350 mil for all your mechanical ducts, all your clearances that have to go through. In a high rise, depending how big it is, it might even be more, it might be 500 because there's gonna be a tremendous amount of services running through that ceiling space. So in our ceiling space, what we're actually gonna do, we're gonna change it on this side over here to 600 millimeters, for example. Next, we're gonna to go to our second floor and we're gonna repeat this step basically all the way until we get to our top. Okay, so what I've gone through is done is gone up to six floors, only because I really got lazy and I couldn't be going up, bothered going up to 50. So we'll make it a six floor high rise apartment. I just couldn't be bothered typing, that's literally it. You can go as high as you want, as low as you want, it's completely up to you and your project. But in this instance, we're gonna to stick to six floors and we're gonna make sure that every single floor has a three meter ceiling. So for example, ground floor has three meters, second floor has three meters, third floor has three meters, and so on, 
all the ceiling spaces are identical to keep it very easy for us to manipulate later on. So let's go OK and start setting up this project in itself. Now let's say we want to showcase the slab all the way up to the next ceiling line. So basically what we're going to be doing is using that ground floor and that ground ceiling or part of that ground ceiling really to create our actual structure. So let's keep it really, really simple. And let's say we're gonna be starting on our ground floor. We're completely dismissing the principles of skyscraper activation and we're literally just going for straight tower repetition. So if we start on our ground floor plan, let's go drop one floor down by pressing command down and going to our footings layer. We'll open up our slab and let's simply draw a 15 meter by 15 meter square. Now, if you're new to ArcCAD and have no idea how I drew that square, the slab tool over here, clicking once, dragging out, pressing tab allows us to change the dimensions, typing in 15,000, pressing tab again, and typing in 15,000 again, then pressing enter, creates our 15 meter by 15 meter square. Now I can simply go there and delete that square because I do not need it and go back to control up so we can go to our floor above, which is our ground floor. Simply right clicking on the footings layer, let's go show as trace so we can see where our actual floor is. Now, if we come across to our wall tool, we can make sure our layer settings are correct. We can make sure our uh, reference line is correct and we can go ahead and select our wall type. In a high rise building, it'll most likely be a curtain wall, but not always, not necessarily. It could still be a traditional build if it's like six stories, eight stories, something like that. But if you start going to 50, 60 stories and creating a very proper skyscraper, most likely it will be a curtain wall. But for the purposes of this, we're not going into curtain walls. We're just gonna select our 90 mil stud partition and draw a big box around that entire slab. So coming into 3D, we'll see that our floor is way too low. So let's just open up those settings, project zero, reference that to zero so it comes all the way back up and sits nicely in line with our floor plate. Next, let's go back into the ground floor plan and let's open up a window. We're gonna just make very generic windows throughout the whole space. We're not really gonna focus on how it looks again. It's not about the design principles. It's about how we fundamentally create vertical towers in ArchiCAD. So let's go, okay, let's use one typical window and we'll introduce it into the space. Let's say we want that window to drag all the way across. And if we go into 3D, we'll see we have a highlight window. We want that to be floor to ceiling glass. So I'll drag that to the bottom, extend that all the way to the top. And then I'll go into the settings just to change a few things around because we don't want just one giant pane of glass. That's, that's a ridiculously expensive pane of glass and never really gonna work. So we're just gonna go through these. First of all, I'm gonna tick this box and change all my lines to black. I hate orange windows, I hate the standard template, but that is, that's a different argument. We're gonna go through this and basically change our fundamental settings so we can actually introduce a few different things. So if we click across to our sash options, go to a HV grid, let's say we only want one vertically and we probably want about or oh, let's say 10 going horizontally. The grid thickness needs to be at 100 mil and 100 mil thickness, this is commercial framing. Now you see we have one very big panel of glass that goes all the way from wall to wall, end to end. The next thing I wanna showcase is cornering. So if we open up this again, come down to our custom corner, go custom corner on, custom corner on. We are gonna make them 90 degrees and we click OK. So if we come back to our ground floor, scroll down, we'll see that that window has been sliced at a 45 degree angle, and then we can go ahead, hold Alt, select that window so we replicate those settings, drag and drop that window on the other side, then Command D, line it up, and introduce a corner window. So if I come back into my 3D, we'll see we have our corner, all the way wrapping around and it's just solid glass. It isn't anything from a wall point of view. Now I'm gonna quickly repeat those steps on the other two walls as well. And there we have it. Now we have one basically super large big box that will be filled with offices, warehouses, whatever you want, whatever you need. That's basically what the function of the space inside our rectangle is going to be. 
what you would actually do speaking from experience is you would dictate where your lift cores go, where all your services are gonna go, where your stairs are gonna go, and then you're gonna also position all your ducts, line up your toilets as best as you can, make sure your columns line up as best as you can, introduce a grid system. That is a whole kettle of fish that we can get into later down the track. Feel free to leave a comment down below if that is something that you're interested in and I'll definitely make some sort of video to basically run you through a lot more in-depth architecture of skyscrapers. But more so, this is again about replicating floor plates up and up and up over and over and over again. So now that we have the fundamental basics of our shell, we're just gonna simply press the command up button once more or the control up button, depending on what kind of system you're on. Go to our slab tool, let's change this to ceilings and introduce a 15 by 15 ceiling, which if we go Command T, we're gonna change that generic roof. Let's just make it 10 mil. And I'll override the surface, it's just some glossy white, so we don't have to worry too much about it. It'll basically introduce one box here. Now, what I'll do is click on that and simply drag all of our corners in 100 mil so the ceiling actually sits on the inside of the building, not the outside. Now, just a quick little point before we get any further into this video, I wanna make sure that you guys are aware of the links that are down below in the description box. There are some phenomenal resources for architects, architecture students, and anybody in the industry. Basically down below is a library of links that is gonna allow you to better yourself and level up to the next level. There is a whole bunch of architectural resources on my website. For example, there's a construction drawing checklist that you can go through and tick off one by one everything that you need on a construction set of drawings so you know and are very comfortable that when it leaves your desk, it is done to the best standard possible. There's ArchiCAD title blocks and a whole bunch of other things as well. There is also a fantastic Discord chat linked down below that is ever growing with some incredible people in there. Everybody in there is almost more experienced and more knowledgeable than me, which I'm so thankful of and so grateful of that we can continue to create a community where everybody is able to help each other grow, learn and be better professionals. So even if you are a student, even if you're just learning ARCHICAD, or if you're anybody in the industry, make sure you join that Discord chat because it is genuinely filled with some great people who are always happy to help out and make sure that we better ourselves each and every day. Anyway, enough of my rambling, let's turn back around. Now, if you've come this far in the video and are wondering, what's the point of this? Can't I just duplicate it up and up and up and up? And one, yes, absolutely, you can duplicate this file. You can simply highlight that all, go Command D and duplicate it up and up and up and up and introduce more and more windows and do a whole bunch of things to make this exactly what you want. But the purposes of this video is very simple. If anything changes, and I can guarantee you from the first day you draw this to the last day it goes out on site, something is gonna change every 10 minutes. You don't want to have to go into this project and change the same thing 50 times. If you have repetition of floor plans, you wanna create small modules or small parts that can be quickly and easily updated. Update it once, save yourself so much time, so many headaches. Now, basically what we're gonna do with this is go back into our ceiling plan, press, press command down or control down and select our marquee tool. We are gonna use the all floors selection and basically just marquee that whole building. Next, what we wanna do is go file, save as. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to our module file. We're not gonna save it as a PLN. You can save it as a PLN and hotlink PLNs in, but I find it a lot quicker from an operating system point of view to hotlink modules. Again, million other ways to do this. I just find this relatively simple and easy. So what we're gonna do is go module file and save that to our desktop and click okay. Now what we're gonna do is go file, save as once more and save that as an ARCHICAD PLN to our desktop so we have a base file to play with. And basically then we're just gonna reintroduce all those modules into our ARCHICAD system. So let's go PLN, save and continue working on this project. Now that we've got this saved as one, a PLN and two, a module file, if we wanted to change something in the module file, we'd simply open up that module in ARCHICAD, 
change it, save it and update it and it will do everything in this file itself. So before we introduce a new module, you wanna create a hot link layer that basically is gonna store all of the information of the hot link on one layer that masters and turns it all off. So by clicking Control L, it opens up the layer settings. I go new, zero, zero, space, hot link and okay. So next we're gonna go up to file, we're gonna to go to external content and we're gonna go place hot link. We're gonna select our module from where we saved it. So new module from file. For me, it was simply on the desktop. So we select that skyscraper module one. We click okay, we wanna input all our stories. Again, remember that it's important that these stories are exactly the same. That's why I just simply saved this file so I don't have to go back and duplicate those stories. Click OK, click Select. We are gonna link it so it has a hotlink general file. I'm gonna go to my 00 hotlink file just because I wanted to show you guys really how to create a hotlink. The master ID, none of this is really important. We wanna keep our elevations as in the story structure of the hotlink source. If something changes, we can then adjust elevations to story structure of host project. But for the time being, literally all those settings work perfectly for us and we're just gonna go place hotlink. It's gonna take a few seconds and then all you do is click OK and click once again off the file. If we come into our 3D, we're gonna see that we basically see exactly what we saw a minute ago. But if we press Command L again and open up our layer setting, we can then turn on our hotlink file, go OK, and you'll see it's doubled up on our environment. So if I try and find our master hotlink layer, which is completely grouped and basically free to move as I see fit, we can then press Command D and begin lifting that up like we originally intended to, and then Command D again and simply dragging it up all the way as far as we need to our top floor. So there, now we have six stories of identical tower done so quickly, so seamlessly, so easily that we don't have to worry about doing any other changes. And as you can see, moving around, spinning it super quickly, my computer still functions 100% okay. It doesn't slow it down, it doesn't lag it. Giving the model in this, it shouldn't lag whatsoever, but Fundamentally speaking, when the project size increases, it doesn't lag so much as if you were to design it all in one master file. For example, an argument's sake, let's go file, open, open, and let's open our module file that we saved before. I'm gonna launch a new in instance of ArcCAD and change something up here. So I'm gonna let this load. I'm gonna completely mess with the ground floor plan and show you how quick and how easy it is to basically change everything at once and with a snap of two fingers, it changes everything vertically for you, no problems whatsoever. Okay, so my module file is now open over here and let's say we've, we've done some cool things, we wanna change the shape of this building entirely. It's no longer what we thought it was gonna be, so let's mess with it a little bit, let's have some fun. Let's start by deleting that wall entirely, replicating that wall system over here, creating some sort of entry, cut into the building, jutting back at 45 and clicking OK. If we come back into our 3D, we'll see very different building very, very quickly. We're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side of this building. We're just gonna basically introduce some sort of interesting characters, some sort of interesting elements to make this building stand out and not look like a boring box. Now I'm gonna go up to my ceiling plan, right click on my ground floor plan, show as trace. By holding the space bar, I'm gonna cut everything out that I don't want. Again, repeating those steps, cutting out the building areas that I don't need. And last but not least, I'll come down to my slab and do that exact same step. So holding a space bar, clicking into the shapes I don't want, cuts it all out, all gone, there we go. Now we have two facades at the moment that are solid glass and a bunch of sides that are concrete. We can leave it as that for argument's sake or we can introduce some more glass to make it one solid skyscraper. I'm quickly gonna go in, infill this with glass and then come back to this 3D window so you don't have to watch me replicate glass for 20 minutes. Right, so I've completed one side of the project entirely out of glass and the rear side I've left as concrete simply just to create something different in the project. And literally, it is very, very simple from here on in. Now what we have to do is we've got to come back in, marquee that again, go file, save as, scroll down to module file and replace our module by pressing okay. 
Now to update the master file, all we have to do is come into file, external content, hot link module manager. We find our module that we've hot linked. Let's quickly go relink from file, just to repeat the simple steps, find the module, click OK, go OK and press done. Now it's gonna update everything, letting it do its thing, pressing OK. We are gonna see a dramatic change in the building. Now, as you can see, this was part of the original hot link manufacturing process. So we're simply gonna delete that, right click on our module above and duplicate that to our ground floor. So it repeats all the way around. And there we have it. That's literally how easy and how quick was that to replicate and change six stories in a matter of seconds. It is so much easier than having to go through and literally change every single thing multiple, multiple times over. You can do this with bedrooms, you can do this with bathroom designs, you can do this with whole floor plates if you want to, if you're confident enough. You can do it with lift cores, you can literally do it with whatever you want because the fundamentals of this are exactly the same throughout. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you learned something very valuable today that you'll take with you into your careers and hopefully one day design your very own skyscraper. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and don't forget about the like button. Believe it or not, that like button, the little tiny little like button that turns blue if you hit it, helps this channel so much with the YouTube algorithm. I can't stress it enough, seriously, the like button genuinely helps this channel grow. It helps more people see these videos and it makes sure I keep making these videos for you guys. But that is all for me today. Like always, I'll see you next Monday.